Good evening, good people, and welcome to another community presentation of the Final Fantasy Randomizer Winter Tournament, Winter Robot Wars Chaos Wing X. I am Saracen. We got Giga doing the tracking tonight, and we have a heck of a race here. We have Dusk Plume versus Caleb. These are two pretty fantastic runners. Slightly biased on my side, Dusk Plume being one of the other members of Bubble Soda Company, the uh, Fall League and other things team. But both runners quite good at this flag set. We've seen some spectacular results from both. And this is upper bracket round three. So if you're not yet familiar with the format of this tournament, we have a mostly loose flag set with some uh, some interesting trolls. We've got a shard hunt. We're going to have to be going full on at those different treasure boxes all throughout the game. But because we also have all loose, who knows when we'll be able to access places. And that makes certain checks rather difficult. The other thing of note is that we've seen this flag set throw some runners for a loop with very low level dungeon dives because the initial experience is very low, but it ramps very high as you get more shards. So we'll see how exactly this seed feels like treating our runners tonight. We've seen plenty of full clears of Earth around level 5, so we'll see what happens. Our runners are, they're off and running on a 10 minute delay and we're about uh, nine minutes and 15 seconds into that. So soon. As far as flag shenanigans, this is our question from Odron here. I don't believe we have any. It looks like standard flags for tonight. Just looking at the stakes for the match tonight, we have these folks in the upper bracket here. The winner of this match, going on to upper round four, will be going up against the winner of the match between Edgeworth and Sorbius. Both runners have been uh, doing pretty well as they go through on that side. And we've got plenty of hypotheticals to go through on the lower bracket to figure out who the, the loser of this game will be going up against as uh, that's two rounds back to figure out who the opponent will be. Our runner should just about be heading out the gate here. And we're off. Caleb with his iconic backwards walking everything. Harm for life too, that's, uh, that's some good white mage action. Ice 3, Brack, and Fast. Always love having breakfast. Food comms already in full effect, as our spell selection reminds me to eat. Uh, notable... Oh, looks like Caleb may have accidentally reset. That's, that's a little bit of an oof. All right, Dust Plume in Tof. First box is just a heal potion. Nothing interesting there. Notable that there are only seven checks before you run out of places to go. So you have to find something pretty quick. And with that, we got money and nothing progression-wise. So our remaining four checks, we've got the King, we've got Sarah, and we've got two boxes in Dwarf. That was a first turn mute coming out of Garland. And a first per turn stone poison skill. Oh! What is this? <laughs> this is a daddy seed. Just, just calling it out now. All right. A little bit of cash. There's a canal. That is not immediate progress, so we're heading over to Dwarf Cave. <laughs> I 
What we did get, though, was some decent money. And very important knowledge. So, I don't think we've talked about Blursons. I haven't talked about Blursons. Why would I talk about Blursons yet? We haven't had a chance. All right, the thief has improved cat claw and telly magic. <laughs> and seeing that cat claw for sale is good news, even if it's max gold. Gold bracelets rolled up and are also max gold. Um, that's a little concerning. Moderately spendy tents, some uh, peers and heels and softs in the Canaria shop. So that's a useful shop, just not fantastic. And Caleb going to be our first runner to get over to Dwarf, most likely. Oh, Frost Wolves. <laughs> Perhaps not. Um, all right, Duskplume will be our first racer to get over to Dwarf Cave. So we need a bridge, a canoe, or a ship here. There's a ship. I ship it. But that also means we have a canal <laughs> we can go all over the place um so things that that opens up we've got matoya we've got provoca we've got crescent lake and we've got earth one through three uh also elf and marsh of course If the seed is really spicy, the next piece of progression will be the item shop in Onrak. We'll see. We'll see. Alright, Dusk Plume up to Bicky. That level one armor shop. <laughs> what a store it is. Bicky giving us the slab, not progression. That's going to turn into an item if we decide to chase it. And quite frankly, I don't know why we would. Um, Lafane is the worst check in this flag set because it requires you to have found the canoe and the floater and the slab to turn it in. <laughs> and... Let me tell you, this flag set has not been kind about giving the runners all of those things. Getting a couple cloth plus twos there. Nice little five absorb for practically no money. Cure four, exit. Lamp, not useful, but we're still picking it up. Okay, we've got cure four at the same level. It's going to do the same thing. Actually, it's a little annoying to have them both at the same level. And Zap. We've got Zap and Saber at level 2. So maybe that ninja will care about the Saber. Who knows? Alright, Dustplume on to the Matoya check. Banking on those three boxes hasn't saved the juncture. We'll see if that changes. Uh, Dusk Plume's party looks to be Thief Fighter White Black. A rune Sword, not bad. One Shard. Oh yeah, Equipping Swords, that's a good idea. Both of our runners heading on out of Matoya. That means we are still hand in hand, and we'll see where they choose to go. Probably Marsh. That seems like the safe bet. And Caleb hangs a left. We out of here. Um, it could be a choice to head to the South Elfland Dock. It could be a choice to just head to Earth, maybe? Um... I like Elfland for magic. I didn't even see what level 3 black was, because I was looking at Caleb's screen. Fog 2, Ruse, and Wall. Uh, Fog 2, underrated spell. 
Not many people like it, I understand why. Still useful in certain circumstances. Heal 3 and Mute notable at level 4 there. Temper. Okay. <laughs> temper at level 4 is not bad. We have fast, we have temper. That's actually pretty huge. We've seen... Uh, We've seen some seeds go poorly on that front. Alright, Caleb gets a slab translation. Picking up some glove plus sixes for the mages, at least. Um, early absorb, very helpful. Just generally speaking. And Caleb is making an Earth play right away. This is a bit dangerous. We don't have many levels, that means we don't have many resources. And there are unrunnables and a lot of different monster packs in Earth. Well, we take shards. That's, you know, good investment. I will say, Caleb has made the fool of me many times before with these Earth checks. Even outside this flag set, so, you know. Another shard, heal potion, that's good stuff. That's one shard for Duskplume in top of Marsh. Little chunk of cash, not bad. I don't feel that there's a pressing need for that cash yet, but we'll see. Mostly just money there. Alright, so not a whole lot in Earth for Caleb on Earth 1. And down they both go in their respective dungeons. And generally speaking, I will say the, uh, the houses are pretty good. However... The flip side of that, they're also very cheap, this seed. They were like 600-ish. Got that, like, 1980s housing market going on. So it's not difficult for our runners to just pick up a bunch, especially when we've seen quite a bit of loose cash. There is our bridge on Duskbloom's side. Not super helpful now. We've kind of passed the point where we care about that. Flame Shield plus two, pretty helpful. Scorpions with fast, mildly terrifying, a little too slow to matter. There's an herb for Dusk Bloom that'll turn into some sort of weapon or armor. There's the burger. <laughs> Caleb's out of there. It's it's time to go turn in that ruby to the Titan. And a shard for Duskbloom. Okay, so not terribly much coming out of that Marsh play. The Ruby coming out of the Earth play is nice. We are going to find out what this herb turns into. It will be some sort of equipment or the tail. It's a ruse stick. I like ruse sticks. Those are pretty handy. There's a rod in Titan's Tunnel. And a crystal and two shards. Wow! That is loaded. Um, yeah. That's pretty good. So, ruse stick on Dustplume's side... You know, good, but not, like, game-changing right now. And 
Caleb gets the crown out of our good friend Sarda. Realizes he's out of warp and exit charges on the thief to go over to the white mage for the exit. Now it's time for Duskplume to perhaps catch up on that front. It's time to go back to Earth. Heck, that marsh. Uh, fade level 5 slot 2. That would be Red L Wizard learnable if we cared. Nuke is promotion locked at level 5. Uh, Davian asking if the timer is a function of the bot. Um, it is actually not in this case. Because we have two different timers. The formats are actually being pulled from their stream. So as things stand right now, Caleb has a progression advantage. Dustplume has a little bit of a knowledge advantage, knowing that Marsh is not a huge deal. Uh, but Caleb could just be skipping Marsh entirely. Heck that place. Caleb, heading to Earth TFC. That is a Warmack box. Not a great place to see it, but it's good to know where it is. So yes, that is a trap chest holding the Mossmeon, and that is a Warmack guarded trap chest. So, you know, if you can come back here later with a little bit more firepower under your belt, get that endgame sword, and get the levels to go with it. You can walk out pretty happy later on. about that folks well there is a floater for Caleb hiding in the vampire box So that floater matters a heck of a lot less than you might think otherwise, as this uh, still very dependent on finding the canoe. As Thavian Hawk points out, the canoe is kind of a lie. You tend to not see the canoe very early. That was a gold plus two. We know that's a max gold item right there. There's the loot. It just happens to have an F in front. And the adamant. This is a very, very dense earth cave. So many good things here. As Caleb makes his way over to Lich's bedroom to get the last three chests, probably go down and take out the Lich for the uh, two shards at the very end. Unless he decides that he sees something spicy enough to leave. Um, but I doubt that. I think Caleb will be going all the way here. There's the TNT. We've got both of our dwarf cave items coming out of Earth. 
and the bottle, also a terrible turn in until we get the canoe, and a house. Oh, we're out of here. We're calling it a day with the incredible gains of Earth Cave. And we're just going to say heck it to those two shards. Maybe if we get close and we're higher level, you know, we're up to 22 shards or 26 shards. We'll be like, maybe we'll just get those last two on Lich after getting the Masa. I doubt it. That's a long walk. But it is back pocket material if you are so inclined. So in chat pointing out, we have limited options of things available right now. And that is true. We're kind of looking at sages or a shop item at this point to open things up. Caleb does not know that. We'll see what Caleb decides to do with that current state of information. This is looking like... Yeah, this is a Crescent Lake check. It's always difficult to tell exactly where the boat's going because Caleb's boat goes in reverse too, so trackless ocean and then you find out that you're on a shore opposite where you thought you were going nothing in the crescent lake shop it's fine cure three and life one notable on the black or white magic level six life one is usable in battle so very helpful to know where that's at but being level 6, it's going to require a few levels. Uh, Duskplume may have reflexively hit that box. I'm not 100% sure. Warmack leading with stop. That's a reset. We're out of here. Unfortunately, that is a decent walk to have lost. And, yeah... I didn't see what the Sages had, so I'm assuming it's nothing? Oh, Key from Sages! What the? Alright, well, technically, we're in Shard Go mode, then. <laughs> technically. However, those Shards are hidden behind some progression items at this point. But Key from Sages, that's a big find. Thank you, Chad, for helping me out there. I'm a little bit blind right now. Solo comms a little bit difficult. Alright, there is one shard in the Elfland locked, and that's, you know, that's alright. Oh, lit three in the black level three. That's, uh, you know, that's worth picking up. Caleb is going to pick up Exfer as well. Very uh, situationally useful spell. Can be handy, can be very entertaining. One thing of note here as well, Caleb basically out of money. <laughs> That's a little awkward, you know, checking shops when you have a grand to your name. But, uh, here we are. Alright, Caleb headed up to check Northwest Castle. Get the locked out of there as well as turn in the crown. Get our piece of equipment from that. That's going to be the tail. Very high value here. Dust Plume continuing to chug along through Earth, following in the footsteps of Caleb, will uh, achieve much the same results, I believe. There's Caleb's tail. And, uh,. Onto the locked box as we go. 
notable in this flag set. We do have the Bahamut Cardia Dock on. We could go promote. There's an Oxiel as well. Maybe that pushes us in that direction. We shall see. We've got a few different checks we want to make before we go there, I think. Dustplume is making the moves towards Lich. Get those two shards out of there. ADR, I think you love to see it. We'll see. Down goes White Mage. As that Earth just punched super hard. And there was a Gold Bracelet plus two on that White Mage, and yet. Alright, a little bit uh, riskier fight here. We're going to give it a shot. Caleb goes to promote. We are fasting our melees. Getting full ruse stick stacks onto the thief. Caleb has promoted pajamas on that ninja. We are slowly but surely chunking through this lich. It's it's not ideal, but it's fine. All right, in Caleb goes to the sea shrine. This Lich looks to be punches only, which is about as good as you could hope for right now without that White Mage up. Which also seems to have rolled on the high end of its HP total, as we are 110 to 200% HP on all of our fiends, all of our bosses. And there goes the Lich. Level 8 uh, on most of Dustbloom's party. About the same on Caleb's, I think. Uh, but Caleb's going to rock it up. We hit 9 there. These Sea Shrine encounters are going to do some wonderful things for Caleb's party. Dustbloom seems to be... Ah, it's time to revive. And maybe chase down these turn-ins that are sitting, because we currently have the uh, crystal to turn in on the inner sea, as well as the adamant and TNT. She might be interested in trying to clear out some of those in order to... Uh, in order to just check them off the list. Maybe find the tail. TFC, just a little gold. Nothing big here. That is a Vorpal plus four. That is a very good sword. Post-promotion, that will be a quite helpful, especially as we get into the endgame areas. That fighter will be able to swing at Vorpal pretty well. We shall see what other swords come out. There's quite a few of them incentivized. Yeah, plus four, that Vorpal is, uh, in my estimation, I like to say that a Vorpal that is three higher in Blursing is better than the, the Katana, but it really does come down to being three higher. 
We'll see. Uh, there's our Opal Cheerio from the Adamant. Unfortunately, Dustplume going to walk down into Dwarves without the key, as she has not yet visited the Sages. And there is an X-Cow as well. Thorhammer for Caleb, actually pretty helpful while we're in here. Helps save some of the spell charges, or just give additional damage options. There is a chime on the mermaid's floor. Uh, ADR calling out the damage bonus on that Xcal plus three. Uh, we are at 35 as our elemental damage bonus. So that is a serious contender. Alright, there is the tail for Dust Plume. That is going to mean that she will promote on her way out somewhere. But this is probably going to start telling her that she needs to head in the direction of Crescent. So I was not looking, chat. Did Caleb do the thing? Did he carbonate bubbles? If he didn't, I'm going to be very disappointed. But I had kind of a lot going on right there and didn't see. Caleb doing the infrequent thing of equipping the Bane Sword. I can't remember the last time I had to do that. Thank you, Malakoff, for confirming. I do appreciate people who are firm believers in the memes. Even if it is just because, you know, Bubbles forced it on them. <laughs> Alright, this looks like Duskplume heading in the direction of Crescent Lake, around the south side of the inner sea continent. Caleb's party up to level 12. This is getting pretty sizable at this point, and sitting on nine uh, shards, which is a decent number. It's a white shirt plus five. That's some real armor for that white mage. Love to see it. All right, here comes the moment of Dustplume's disappointment as she finds the key and it's starting to feel like she's a bit behind. It's more than just a marsh cave at this point, as the key routing was just so efficient for Caleb. All right, Caleb down to the Sharknado floor. What shall we find here? Unrunnable lobsters. That, that's part one of what we find. And they're casting Dark. Improved Dark is turned on in this flag set, which is why it wasn't just a meme decision for Duskplume to purchase Lamp, even if the Cure 4 at the same level does the same shindig. But uh, Dark landing on your melee is pretty terrible with that flag on.
Um, was that a death touch water? It looked like damage and slain, but I didn't know if it was just enough damage. shield action for our, our fighter, or our knight rather. Not a bad shield. Goes poorly with the dragon armor, which is already covering that resistance, but it's fine. Alright, Dustplume has done the checks of the Northwest Castle. Boom on to promote. And we'll have much better swords. That's a katana minus one. That's a pretty big disappointment for the thief there, but you know. We do what we can. And Caleb is planning to take out Kraken by the looks of it, healing up and is walking back in that direction after having cleared out the Sharknado floor. But that katana is still. A decent weapon, even at minus one. We have the fast and the temper to do some great things with it. But we are also sitting uh, minus the ruse stick that Duskplume has. This sea dive has been exceptionally kind to Caleb's levels as well. We're now looking at uh, 14 across the board, pretty much. It's a good place to be at at this stage of the game. Here comes a Kraken. We got a Bane Sword use coming out of the night. We got a Brack coming out of the Black Mage. And a white shirt from the White Mage. And just a swing from the Ninja. Ninja doesn't have a whole lot else to do. Three hits, three damage. Takes two hits to the face for 57. Brack comes out broken into pieces. That is a cool four shards that Caleb picks up taking out that Kraken. And it's time to boogie on out of here. Well, what do we have open to us? Well, we found a chime. That means it is Mirage time. 18 boxes. In a very compact space, relatively speaking. This is a nice, dense pickup. It always feels good to go through greater than less than. But even the first floor, not bad. Easy to exit out of. Easy to just get to the second floor. Mirage... Probably, you know, top five destinations. bit of shards here. Three shards in the first five chests. Very nice.
Duskplume, meanwhile, is heading through mermaids now. There's another shard. Four shards in the first uh, of the boxes here. You get eight boxes out of the way, half of them having shards. That's a very valuable Mirage 1. There is the chime for Duskbloom. Thank you, Duskbloom. I have no doubts in you, but thank you all the same. As a reminder, every six-pack of bubble soda comes with a free koozie made from the mermaid's tail. No part of the mermaid goes to waste. Bubble Soda Company. Drink responsibly. ADR with a good call out here about the uh, the value of taking Lich early versus the value of getting the heck out of there. And what is the risk of wipes, the cost of time just getting there, all valuable points here. Caleb up to level 17. That's actually pretty high for the stage of a seed in my experience. I've seen a lot of, uh, oh, there's a loose ribbon. Hooray. We've seen a lot of our runners get to uh, go mode. Oh, and our canoe, we airborne fam. Seen a lot of runners who have uh, gotten to go mode. They've got all their shards. They've got their loot and their key, and they're like level 14. So Caleb already blowing that out. Dust plume headed down the sea shrine. Time to take out a kraken. Get all the tasty boxes to go with it. While well, that's going on, Caleb is headed to be airborne. We've got a sky boat to fly backwards in. With said skyboat, it is uh, reasonably valuable to go check some of the turn-ins that we've got. We've got a bottle here. We've got a translated slab. I don't know if we want to go all the way to the we'll finish, man. But, you know, it's an option. We'll see what options Caleb decides to take. There's where our shop item is. It's a second cabin. Power bonk. We're taking that. We take those. Mute touch on one of the seafloor counters. That's a little rude. Caleb is going to go down to Lafayne. This could be a very fast seed. And a ribbon from the Lefanish Man. We keep those. Duskbloom looks like got bounced out, unfortunately, on this Kraken side. And this 
looks like a play towards the Cardia Isles where we have 13 chests to check. There's one shard. Doing a quick air save in case this turns out to be a dud. Dragon blocked because of course. It's always a terrible feeling. Ice armor plus five. We'll probably keep that. That's a very good armor. out of that final island it's okay we got a decent enough payout from that cardia caleb just cruising he's about to pick up some good swords some good spells we've got uh the ability to get that nuke onto the black wizard at this point since that was the promotion lock slot Opal Cheerio, opposite an Opal Shield. Dust Plume heading through the Sharknado floor, getting all those checks picked up. There's the Excal plus three. Caleb's probably very happy about that. Four shards remaining for Caleb. So Caleb still has Canaria locked, Toph locked. He could very easily just head to Volcano Armory. All very viable plays. I would say leave the Toph locked and just head to the Armory for the density of it. We'll see. There are 33 total chests in Volcano, if my counting from the other night was correct. One more than Sea Shrine, and we're seeing so far Bupkis out of our Canaria locked. Yeah, that's pretty terrible, all right. But it is time for that knight to have life too, and this uh, ninja to have fast. And here comes that Vorpal plus four. Good call out on the Better Trap Treasure from ADR. That uh, Better Trap Treasure being on means that the Toflocked has an increased chance of providing a third ribbon. Dust Bloom up against Kraken 1. With significantly better equipment than Caleb had at the same time. As we see with an 8 hit, 700 some damage uh, swing from that Excal. But, you know, Brack. It does Brack things. And Caleb into the Volcano. Nice little money box there. Heading up into the hairpins. I think I would be looking at hairpins last, but I'm not in this tournament, so it's okay. 
Brocade plus five, very good shield. Caleb is going to do the full clear of the hairpins. Going to make use of the warp on the far side of this to, to prevent the walkout. Dragon sword in that in that chest. Dust plume, I think, is going to be three shards short after this floor, <laughs> which is you know a pretty good feeling for where things are at. That's um, there's a little bit of catch up room that needs to happen in terms of progression space, but similar levels, and you know. Roughly equivalent to on the shards, in part because of that lich. There is one shard from the armory so far. Not paying out as one would expect for the density of those checks. And Caleb about to make the dive, head down towards the rest of this dungeon. the Agama floor provide today? Well, there's a Zeus gauntlet we don't care about. There's a house. So far, nothing big. We are seeing some pretty low hit point levels on our poor eggs. This does look like Caleb is setting up to kill off the rest of the party, but he did pick up life two on that night, so it looks like maybe an investment into that night once we get out of here. That is the ninja down. The hard part of setting up for the grind done right there. Nice little blue stake over there on Dustbloom's side, getting up to 18 across the board. Still a little low. These flags have been kind of punishing to runners who have tried to take the uh, Toph Dive a little early. Sometimes we get a good one, sometimes we don't. This Excal going to make one round work of our uh, Agamas here. Pro ring, we take those. Pro ring plus five is a very good piece of armor. Uh, it does look like maybe we're going to try to heal up at some point with the white wizard. Or was that it here for at the, uh, at the night? Okay. We're still thinking about it. Down goes Black Wizard. That's definitely something that Caleb is looking forward to there. There's our Power Bonk on Dust Plume's side. And Dustplume is going to head down and get the ribbon from the uh, from the, the Lefenish man. All right, we are two man level twenty one on Caleb's side.
19 across the board on Dusk Bloom's party. We are down to that solo night. 22 on the night. And walking it out. Alright, picking up life on the white mage. White, life 1, castable in battle. Cure 3 as well. Helpful spells, for sure. And Caleb seems to be pretty sure that he's got what he needs in order to finish out this seed. Little scary, to me at least. But I'm kind of an over-prepper. Caleb, I think kind of known for uh, feeling good enough where he's at and he's just going to go. He wants to finish out this race. Dusk Plume headed down the volcano. And Caleb on to the loot plate floor. Uh, Rubes, I should actually say, because I never went over the Blursings, you know, never wrote them down, so that was kind of my fault. The the fighter has plus 10% hit. <laughs> Which I think means 23, maybe? Maybe, maybe 22? So, yeah, the, this was one of those parties where, like, it just sort of formed itself. <laughs> That's 23 on that night, so that's probably that extra swing. Plume picking up the spells. It is very important that the knight have the cure for the uh, the life to just be ready for all of this. While Caleb is on Lich's floor, just about to Lich two, who is going to fall apart very rapidly. <laughs> this is going to be a very fast fight. Cheeky zap for the. Uh, the black wizard we'll see if it actually goes out nah we got a fade it's fine and dust plume spells purchased shards obtained also headed into tofe after crashing into a forest it's all right we know how airships go these two runners doing a fantastic job keeping up with each other pushing the pace caleb about to get to carry after some unrunnable agamas Dust Boom taking a fight against the Forgasties. I don't hate it. It's just... It's resources and time. Time being a big resource here. But here we are at Carry 2, healing up with healing potions. We're going to save our spell charges for later by the looks of it. That's 21 across the board for Dusk Plume. And she's going to exit and save those levels, get those charges, and head back in. Not a huge walk. Just a little bit to get to that third floor of Toph, which uh, Topher, where she was at before. <clears throat> Down goes Carrie, too, on Caleb's side. 
and we are running from this pack of gasties. We're uh, we're fine with that. Caleb charging through the seafloor. And does Clune pass the loot plate heading in towards Lich? We'll be there in the not too distant future. This is quite the race. If Topher decides to pull anything nasty, we'll see how these runners have to adapt to it. Bit of a decent hit onto the night from Kraken there. We're uh, concerned enough to pull out a Cure 4. There's a Nuclear! Big damage across the party. That Cure 4 looking mighty reasonable now. Uh, followed up with an Inferno. Those Plume pulling Lich 2. This won't be a long fight for that. And down goes Kraken 2. We've got the Life 2 charges available on that White Wizard to handle this situation. We're going to throw out a heal three, two heal threes, maybe a heal potion or two, and just top everybody off before heading towards Tia two. Large experience pack of lizards here on Dust Plume's side. The, uh, Ice 3 and the Harm 4 will be helpful in clearing that out, as will the X-Cow. There's a little bit of a roadblock there. <laughs> um, we're seeing some good damage coming out from Caleb's side already. This is looking like it's going to be a pretty quick fight. Uh, the Tia. White Shirt being held up for the Invis 2 cast, very helpful as well. Chip damage from Tia with the Fire 2. Nothing big, but 9 hits 494 by the looks of it from that X-Cal. And 8 hits 166. What happened there? <laughs> Nuke comes out. Pretty low roll. Very sad. 6 hits 212 from that Katana. 7 hits 189. And 7 hits 189 again for Down Goes Tia 2. Everybody's standing on Caleb's side. He's on the Chaos Floor sub-hour. Dustplume not far behind on the Kraken Floor still has two Fiend refights to go through. And she will also be heading in that direction pretty quick. Caleb saying it's Vorpal time. And on we are to Chaos. We got some fast, some white shirt coming out on that side. Three hits 72 coming out from that Vorpal initially. Four hits 106 from the Ninja. Fast comes out after the Swing from the Night, so we're going to see a little bit more coming out soon. I'm going to continue buffing on the... Uh, the knight with a temper, as well as a white shirt from the white wizard. Lit 2 comes out from chaos, takes out that black wizard. So we are no longer, uh, we're, we're lifing. We're, we're calling it as an important character right now. Or it's 131 coming out from that Vorpal. <laughs> chaos immediately casts stun on the black wizard. As soon as he's revived. Cure 4 going to come out and fix that status. Quad X comes out of the White Wizard, who has a ribbon, I believe. So that is a safe caster there. Continuing the tempers. Heal 3 comes out. Just going to take care of all the chip damage that Chaos has been doing throughout this fight with the Lightning 2, Fire 2, etc. Gonna get a wall onto that Black Wizard. We're tired of the Black Wizard dying. The crack is ineffective, which is good. Temper continuing to come out onto the knight. Seven hits, was that 
uh, was that a four digit damage number? It looked like it may have been. And terminated on Caleb's side. Get your GG's out in chat. That is an official race time .gg time of one hour, two minutes, 14 seconds. Dustplume, meanwhile, pulling up onto the chaos fight as well. Just getting a quick life two out onto the black wizard. Get a couple heal potions out. So not far behind at all. We'll see about getting some interview time in here with our runners as they finish up dust plume into the fight getting that ice three to the face we got fast coming out onto the night we got a white shirt we got some swinging we we're we're going for it temper onto the night who is wielding that vorpal white shirts ruse stick coming out Ninja Fast itself, Temper continuing to come out onto that night. Lit 2 goes out. That's going to take out that Black Wizard. But has the Black Wizard done enough? That's kind of what it seems like from what we're seeing on Dustplume's side. We're seeing some pretty decent hits. Five hits, 444. We're doing the swing, swing, weight routine, and uh, one of those is now stunned, so it's only two inputs. And terminated on Dust Plume side as well. That is a one hour, four minute, eight second finish for Dust Plume. GG's out in chat for Dust Plume. And we are joined by Caleb, our winner tonight. How you doing, man? Man. My heart is pumping. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank God for that that ten minute delay. As soon as as soon as I got the the kill on chaos, I put my controller down, just walked upstairs, and uh, had my my wife feel my pulse because it was just boom 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 boom. I was <laughs> whew, all nerves that entire hour, man. Just as soon as I. I got cheeky. I was like, I'm going to exit out of my shop purchases and tent on Canaria instead of walking in and going to the end. Because I know Dusk Plume is one of the, the best runners in the game right now. And I was just like, I can't cede any time to her. So what do I do? I immediately cede like a minute and a half to her because I'm... <laughs> because <laughs> I, I fat finger the reset and then uh, have to rename my party and I'm like tilted because I'm like, oh crap, I got to... Uh, I gotta read. I can't. I can't just have them just be A and B B B and C. I have to name them, you know. And I was just. Oh, it's man. part of the Caleb brand. Yeah. Right. And then um, it just it just everything after that. I was like, I have to gamble now uh, on everything. So it's like I I got the canal early. I got the boat. I was like, I'm leaving Inner Sea. I'm gonna do my quick checks. I'm leaving the Inner Sea and I'm going to go to Earth Cave. And the whole time I didn't get waiting on like canoe or key or something i was just like man i hope that there was like something and after getting the loot on earth for us like man i hope there was something in marsh that dusk plume bit on like a uh, oxy ale or a chime and uh unfortunately that there wasn't <laughs> apparently because it was I found a, all that a stuff. bridge <laughs> yeah i found all that stuff that i was like oh no like so this is progression so at best she goes to marsh and um, I can try to make up that that thirty seconds to a minute part um, preset at the beginning, but man, all nerves. Uh, so I completely understand, and you know, honestly, you chase down things in the way that the seeds seemed to want. Mm -hmm. So that that worked out well for you. Uh, Dusk Plume has joined us in the booth. Gigi's Dusk Plume. GG's dust bloom. GG, Caleb. This was brutal, man. Like I, <laughs> <laughs> I was just telling Saracen, like I am finally after ten minutes, like not shaking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know that. Uh, one of these days, I'm gonna 
make sure and look at the war mech chest before just opening up. Oh no! I did that again. Oh. Uh, I think I've done that three or four times now. I just I, I autopilot and yeah doesn't register until I see monster box. I'm like, oh wait, no, that's really bad. I'm level six. Yeah. Uh, and then that's yeah. the shrine. I if I never see a lobster again in my life, I'll be thankful. There were so many unrunnable encounters. Like I didn't hard reset until I accidentally hard reset leaving Mirage, but like I've just hit so many hard resets through the game. It's just like, or not hard. I'm sorry, unrunnable encounters. See, my brain's still all over the place. Just yeah, no, <laughs> love that. Uh, love that second encounter on sea, unrunnable Sahags. Just mm -hmm. so many, so many. Just not, yeah, not it was great. No flow. Yeah. No flow to it at all. Yeah, it was just like, well, I guess I could have rebalanced my item magic a little bit better, but I had my knight swing in the Bane Sword and for a while, and I was convinced I wasn't going to find a decent sword, and then was it finally able to get in the air and do all the rest of the turn-ins and found the Vorpal, found the Excal, and I was like, all right. And then all through Topher, I was like, I got all the fetch items. Where's my roost stick? How come I, and then like I'm going through my head I'm just like I definitely did the dwarfs I definitely did crystal I did the slab I did the bottle I did the crown and, and then I was just like it wasn't until I saw the herb on your screen when I went upstairs and I was just like oh I guess I didn't have the herb because <laughs> <laughs> oh, like that would that would have been that would have been a nice to have but luckily we caught a white shirt I think in sea shrine and that yeah was, yeah yeah. Bottom left chest on C4, I think. Uh, did you not go to Marsh then? I I faded Marsh because I accidentally uh, lost to the the new game boss at the beginning. Uh. Um, <laughs> reset out of reset out of a tent use before my save kicked in, and uh, I had to remake my party. And then from that moment on, I was just like, I I have to play very very loose and very fast, and hope that my bus doesn't explode. Because I, like, I was sitting on the. I overthought this party composition so much, Dust Bloom. Like, out of just like <laughs> I, total respect for you as a runner, because I was like, I, I caught your post game interview uh, after your win last round, and you're like, I always take a fighter. I want that nuke protection. I was like, it's smart. I could take advantage of that if I don't take a fighter. But if I don't take a fighter and I get blown up, she's going to have a fighter and she's going to survive whatever I whatever blows me up. So I have to take a fighter. Tifa Tally Magic was a no-brainer, and then I was like, "Do I just run three man? Because like I know you're probably going to run four up." So I was like, "That could be an advantage if I get XP going a little bit quicker." And you know, but there's like I'm really susceptible to like red magic if I bring a red mage. I was like, "Ah, maybe I'll just do black mage." And you can see the beginning of the my vod on my stream, and it's like I sat on thief fighter nun black mage for like a solid two minutes, and I was just like, "This is what I'm going to do." It's gonna be fine, and I was like, maybe I should do Thief Fighter White Mage. I was like, I'm just bringing them all. I'm just bringing them all because I can always kill one of them off if I don't need it. But so I, I was way in my head about this race, Dust Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in the end, we ended up choosing the same party, so yeah, party composition didn't end up mattering. Yeah, it's a, it's a strong, it's a strong party in this uh, flag set for sure. With how how good the Thief is, having access to all of the magic, and when I saw that the um. The, the eventual for sure moment for me was like, I'm definitely taking a Black Mage over a Red Mage because Black Mage didn't have level 8 spells to block out fast if it was at level 8, um, which I've had a number of times when like Black Mage rolls like Doom Magic or Buff Magic or something, and it's just like, that's the seed that fast is going to be level 8 and we don't get it. Um, but luckily it was level one and that was great. <laughs> yeah, that was that was very nice to just see that right away and like, oh great, I don't gotta worry about it. I don't have to yeah. search the whole world to try and find it. Yeah. So I think one of the things that was really interesting was the timing and uh discovery of the key. Mm. Uh, so Caleb, you made a beeline for the sages right after you got out of earth yeah i don't and, like being on the inner sea if i don't have to be so if i can do outside docks that's what i'm gonna do yeah so you grabbed that key and you were able to make checks and then 
with the oxyl from northwest, I think yeah. it was, you were able to just dive straight down to sea and skip out on the other locks until later. Mm -hmm. Dust Plume, you had a little bit of a, a rough time of that by going and checking out all the fetch quests first, and then finding the key after. Uh, thoughts as you were going through that Dust Plume? Uh, well, the thought there was I had those four turn-ins, the, the Herb, the Crystal, TNT, and Adamant. And I thought it was better to take my chances on that to find something progression-wise rather than go to the Sages or maybe there's a shop or the, and, and a, uh, an item in either the Crescent Shop or the Onrack Shop. It just seemed like a a better chance that there was going to be something there. And there wasn't, so that didn't work out for me. But I, I feel like they're all in the inner sea. They're all fairly close to each other. Um, shop items are definitely not a guarantee. So it, it's four checks versus like one and a half, one and three quarters. It just it seemed like the better percentage play to me. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was I was gambling. I had um had all those issues in the early game so i was just like i'm gonna i have the loot i need a key so i need a key i need progression because earth had a fair amount of shards but like i needed progression so i was like i'm gonna finish this out i'm not even gonna fight lich because i don't have a ribbon i don't have anything to protect me if he if he opens with like stone poison or blaze or something and i'm just like I'm, i'll be i'll be screwed and i'll have to do all this over again so i immediately exited from earth four and I was like, I'm going to go to Sages, check the shop, talk to them, because then I can hit the lower dock and um, go into Marsh from there. And then whatever progression I get from there is going to lead me south into Onrak or Mirage. So I figured Southern Dock from Elfland is great. And then it was the key. And I was like, oh, this is even more better because now I can do, I can route in Elfland locked. I can finally check level three and four magic. And then I can go to Northwest and turn in the crown that I got from Earth. And when crown was tail, I was like, this is feeling like a sort of like a blessed seed at that point to get tail that early. So I and then I got the oxy. I was like, well, this is just what I'm doing. I'm going to just abandon Marsh, abandon the northern key locks until I'm in the air. And if I'm not in the air, I'll get them on my way to Topher and hope that, you know, there's a piece of gear or something because I, it's I don't I know it's not going to be necessarily required with loot and key being in my pocket so i i dipped south and did mermaids figured i was going to take some fights the amount of unrunnables in sea decided i was going to take a lot more fights than i wanted to take but getting the canoe um that no, was chime it was chime and mermaids and then canoe was in mirage and it was that atypical linear it's it's linear as soon as you make your decision between marsh and earth you know with these yeah. flags it feels like and so i was like all right well i'm gonna clear c and i got lucky on like a second cast of brack for kraken headed to mirage i was like man i hope cube is here i really don't i don't care if i get the the canoe now i just let me get let me get my shards let me clear out sky and i'm assuming cube was ordeals or waterfall which is crazy because I if it wasn't or I guess it could have been a marsh locked um, or tofu locked. Uh, true. Also not checked. Ah, fair. But yeah, this was, uh, th go ahead. No, I was gonna say this was a crazy fast seed for um, not what I was expecting. Yeah, uh, that that lich fight backing out of that for you and me doing that ended up. Uh, being about the amount of time of difference between us. Uh, I just went back and checked and it was about like 2 minutes and 10 seconds from when I got the last chest on Earth 4 to defeating Lich and that happened because my white mage died at the battle before Lich and oh, I ended no. up having to kill Lich with a fasted long sword fighter and a fasted saber thief. Oh, that's And that took so forever, cool. so... Yeah, that's <laughs> gross. So, uh, shout out, since you mentioned the stone poison. Uh, Caleb, you didn't see anything from Garland, did you? 
No, I had a uh, ice three go oh, off God. and uh, take him out. Um, what is it with me and Garland? <laughs> what is it with me and Garland? Come on, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh no! So the short version is all that time you were worried about having seated by messing up the new game mm-hmm. boss was made up for Garland having first spell mute and first oh. skill stone poison. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, so so I, 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 I get all the chests, I warp out, I save, I go to Garland, I'm like, okay, ice three, harm four, one doesn't kill both will. Mute goes mm-hmm. off, mutes everybody. Alright, fine, we're doing this again. Reset, go back in. Stone poison. Alright, we're doing this again. Great. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> it's so crazy the the um, the enemies we we create in our head when we're racing. Because <laughs> like, I mean, had I known any of that, I would have felt way better. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, okay, f- with even footing, but that's just like, man. Uh, for me, it's I'm public st- enemy number one, war mech chest. Public enemy number two, garland. <sighs> I did. I did see the warmack box and i took an extra step into the room and before i was like oh wait that's we're not we're not doing trap shards because that's what papa dukes and i were <laughs> gonna do and then this this morning we were doing a, a pickup race and he i pinged for a pickup race and he um joined otherwise i was just gonna do like a straight up vanilla winter tournament practice but i was like you know what we didn't get the race last round because unfortunately he wasn't feeling well and missed the missed the race due to a toothache so i was like this would be cool with sort of like a redemption race i'll get to see if i would have actually beat papa dukes and we can run our flags and he was amenable to it thought it was fun finally put him to use and so i was i was used to opening xboxes in that seed this afternoon but uh so like there was a little hesitation like no we're not opening that box (laughs) 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 that's that's the bad box don't do that one but in that earlier practice race this morning i walked into earth and top of Earth One had an Xbox because, like, well, that's cool. That's Warmack. That's easy to get. And I just left. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it's like twenty minutes. I was like, oh crap, that was a shard. <laughs> but I, I do appreciate the the, the vanilla run through on the flags, kind of keeping me honest and not getting you to. Because I feel like sometimes as a racer, I am insecure about my abilities. And when I see someone like you, Dust Bloom, who's like super good, I'm like, oh, I hope I hope they want to do something goofy. So I can have like a chance, <laughs> and there's and you're like, no, nah, just keep it vanilla. I was like, oh, okay, okay, I'm not panicking. You're panicking. <laughs> I mean, you're no slouch either. Come on, like, yeah, but like, we, we, mental, mental, mental illness is <laughs> mental <laughs> self esteem issues, right? No, oh, yeah. it, I know nothing about that. Don't it, worry. Yeah. yeah, imposter syndrome, right? But right, no, no, I yeah. was very, very um, humbled to like take a take a win here and. Um, not looking forward to the next round at all. And what's funny is I wasn't looking forward to like the lower bracket either, because it's like Odron's down there waiting. Yeah, it's and gonna like, be either Odron or or I think uh Zeno Zeno. Yeah, yeah, Zeno's Magus and or yeah, like Zeno and Odron. I don't know if they're hanging out in chat, but they're probably gonna try to get you to do something goofy. Stick to your guns and just do. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I, I practiced for one thing, and I'm gonna run one yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fair. I, I was doing so many pickup races that like the vanilla flags was just like, I need something because like I was like losing my mind getting tilted in practices and not finishing seeds and just forfeiting all over the place. And I was like, I need to find something. Yeah, it makes this that makes this interesting. And then it was the the four forest or like running goofy parties. And I think there was a one night race where it was like a a handful of us were running a pickup race and thief rolled plus fifty agility, and everybody's like, "I'll take a, a Sirenus Was like, "I'm gonna take solo thief." I was like, "I'll take solo thief." And then everybody took solo thief, and it was like, I think that was like the turning point. I was like, "All right, I've revitalized my interest in these flags," and it. <laughs> help me kick the forfeit bug for a while but um yeah vanilla flags with these it's they're the slowest fast flags i've ever played they don't they don't feel fast they really yeah, don't but, it, it, yeah it, it but feels you like finish it drags an hour on forever yeah, yeah it just it feels like it drags <laughs> on for so long and it's like oh god it's 30 minutes in and i have nine shards and i'm level eight like how am i ever going to get a good time yeah. and then 35 minutes later it's like oh i'm 
done. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hard cut to ten <laughs> minutes later. Like, I guess I'm going to Telfer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, what's going on? It's so they're so wild. Like how it's just nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh my god, I can't. Like it's it's a roller coaster. It's just it's just just clicking up that 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 ascent before it crests at the top, and then you realize, oh, I got. Oh, okay, I see the path through the rest of the seat, and it's just like, oh, it's over. Okay. <laughs> and it kind of makes up for it uh, emotionally for that the the way they abuse you in the beginning of the, the seed. So I've had fun with them. Yeah, that's it's important. So Caleb, you're going up against the winner of Edgeworth versus Sorbius, which I believe is happening this Saturday evening. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I mean, you Ed- know, if, if you want me to take your place, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Edgeworth is one of those titans in the community of, like, he's he's a guy that's been around. Like, I think he was the first spring tournament champion back in, like, 2017. And, like, when there's, like, 20 entrants. And back when I was just, like, a fledgling viewer on YouTube. And is still around. Doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like he's actively, like, you know, participating in a lot of events, but like never loses his edge. I guess that's why he has the name Edgeworth, but it's just, he's always good. And I've only, I've only bested him in races where he's forfeit until the, um, the qualifiers. And I, I beat him in like one seat and I was like, Oh man, finally, after all these years. And meanwhile, Sorbius is like a guy. I'm just like seeing the times. I'm just like, Who's this guy? Why is he? How's it? No. <laughs> Sorbius. <laughs> Sorbius is in the duck class, by the by. Oh, uh, man. So he if, probably if shouldn't you... be. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's you know, I, think, I guess that's a feather in your cap, man. Well, I, I can't remember if Sorbius took the last boot camp or not, but if you look at the Duckling Weekly leaderboards... Serbius has been putting up good times there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like <laughs> this week he, he beat me by six seconds. Last week he beat me by five minutes. Like, you know, it's it's that sort of thing. Like, mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I don't run super hard when I'm doing the seed vetting, but like it's, it's good to see ducks that are coming in hard and fast, right? right. And especially to go up against somebody of edgeworth's quality because yeah there's no denying that edgeworth is a fantastic racer i'm looking forward to seeing whatever matchup you get on the far side of this dust plume i'm looking forward to seeing whatever match you get after two rounds worth of stuff happens behind you uh yeah i, I get to just sit back and uh wait and relax and yeah so see who's gonna be xeno v magius is tomorrow night so um, we'll find out a little bit of that equation tomorrow night. Yeah, Magus is one of those interesting runners that like a lot of people have like slept on him, and he's beaten good runners in this community. And like, that's that's going to be an interesting matchup. Like if if Zeno, you know, gets a little cocky, you know, starts doing some goofy stuff that Zeno does, like Magus might like, and we get a Topher like we've seen in other seeds like that. Um, the, the Jay Scheidel Woo Bear match. If we get a toe for like that, that's anybody's game. Fair it's enough. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't sleep on that matchup. And then the winner of that taking on Odron, like, Odron's a guy that I've raced several times in the morning, and it's just like back and forth. Like, sometimes I'll win, sometimes he'll win, you know? And it's just another, like, newer runner that, like, I didn't really know of until, like, he beat me in last year's winter tournament. <laughs> it's like, I kind of and I and, you know just took it for granted. I was like, hey, I'm racing a, a newer player. This is gonna be great. And then just got punched in the mouth by him. I was like, oh, okay, I guess that's how these ducks do now. She chose the violence. <laughs> Odron was one of the uh, ducks who graduated to platypus in last year's Derby, if I'm remembering mm-hmm. right. And yeah, certainly has put on quite a good showing in a lot of different races. Yeah. Absolutely. Like there's there's so many like I think we're I was talking about it with Red Mage last night during the, the Spells App Ravioli race on comps. Like there's so many good runners in this tournament. Like 
there's no path through a bracket that feels great. Every little, like, if you look at all the little possible 1v1s you could have had, it's just like, no, that's, that's a tough match. That's a tough match. That's a tough match. Uh, there's no way I'm winning that. And it's just like, maybe I can take that one. You know, it's just like, there's not a lot of confidence, at least with me, looking at that bracket and being like, where's my path through this? And of course, it's like, through Papa Dukes, through Dusk Bloom, and now potentially through Edgeworth or Sorbius, the the, the big duck. Like, and it's like, oh, what well, in the in the world that I escape that? Like, who do I get next? Uh, oh, Chanigan, Chanigan or, ale ale or pickles? Or pickles with beer. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. So you, you're saying it gets easier? <laughs> it's like, and then it's like, if I if I get through that, it's like, ah, oh, spell zap and rubes, and like, what the heck, man? Like. The, the, the top part of that upper bracket is like too hard to tease out just from that but yeah that's the whole point of a bracket man it gets harder as you go on it's not supposed to get easier <laughs> but but why can't it <laughs> <laughs> it should because <laughs> that's not fun for the viewers and that's who we're here uh, for okay oh no ale's still in chat <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's Hilario, too. Oh, no. <laughs> well, this was a lot of fun, though. I mean... Yeah, this was. And I think we should probably head in the direction of final thoughts. Uh, so we'll start with you, Caleb. Uh, I mean, it was... I think the, the, the lesson not learned today, because I applied the lesson I learned a long time, it was never underestimate an opponent and always prepare. And, like, even, even when I started getting key items, I was like... I feel pretty good. Like I got loot, I got key. I haven't really hit any major roadblocks other than weight, like uh, other than weights, other than unrunnable encounters. And it's just like, I feel pretty good. Like I feel like I'm reading the seed well until I hit volcano. I was like, where the heck are my last two shards? There's supposed to be two in here, at least two in here. And there's just barely two. And I was just like, but up until then, I was just like, I feel pretty good. I'm going into Topher like, you know, around 53 minutes, like, I know Dust Plume has put up times around an hour, but you know, there's a chance she went to Marsh. And but like I never I never relented because Dust Plume's a fantastic runner and racer and I knew if I stuttered for a second, I would have lost in less than two minute difference. It one hundred percent true. So I hats off to you, Dust Plume. Alright, Dust Plume, final thoughts. Well, I appreciate all the kind words, Caleb. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a very, very fun winter tournament so far. I feel like I'm playing the best that I ever have. And just have to make my way through the Lucius bracket at this point. Uh, Saracen, thank you for calling the race. Nice to have a fellow Bubble Soda Company member calling the race for us. All the people out there in Speed Gaming Land watching us, I appreciate it. Trackers, Restreamers, everybody, thank you so much as always. Um... I'm going to go lay down and have nightmares about lobsters, garland, and boxes <laughs> with an X on them. That's what I'm going to do for the rest of my night. Yeah. Also, a uh, big thank you to Giga uh, coming over from the Mystic Quest community to do some tracking. I got to get... see when I, when I get bounced out of the tournament, I can go play Mystic Quest randomizer some more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have tons of races still going on tonight and uh, coming up over the weekend currently running right now these are all uh there are links to the multis in our discord we've got lord fizzle versus maddie darren drives versus Sirenus, demon frog versus woo bear i'm gonna tell you right now darren drives versus Sirenus is a spicy one because i looked in a chat and found out that they decided to draft darren drive started white mage Sirenus said oh that sounds fun let's have two more of those so that's going to be an interesting one right there. Coming up in about 20, 30 minutes, we got two more races. Solario Rex versus Jay Shadell right here on Speed Gaming 2. Whoa. And Dark Moon versus Jay Coper. That's going to be another one with a multi-link. So if you are not yet part of the Discord, head on over to FinalFantasyRandomizer.com. Click the Join the Discord link at the bottom of the page and uh, check out the Race Announcements channel. Maybe go to the roll request, give yourself the spectator roll so you get an alert every time we have one of these races coming up. If you're interested in learning how to do what these runners have done tonight, putting on a great show, 
check out the Duckling Boot Camp. That's going to be coming up at the end of March. That's me and Luffy DV, two champs teaching you how to race, how to beat us old hats at this game. It's a six hey, week Saracen. course. Hey, what? Where can runners find links to all the discords and stuff and the randomizer itself? Uh, everything is at FinalFantasyRandomizer.com. FinalFantasyRandomizer.com? FinalFantasyRandomizer.com! FinalFantasyRandomizer.com! Oh, FinalFantasyRandomizer.com! <laughs> There's even like a wiki inf- there. FinalFantasyRandomizer.com! Yeah. Do we have an inflatable wavy guy? <laughs> Head on! <laughs> Over to FinalFantasyRandomizer.com! <laughs> well, with that, I've been Saracen. Our tracker, Giga, who piped in there just a moment there. Uh, we've had a fantastic race. I hope you've all enjoyed. Caleb, Dustplume, you both put on a fantastic race. Thank you to y'all. Chat, thank you for hanging out as I've been rolling the solo comms tonight. Definitely check out the rest of the races that are coming up tonight. And all this weekend, we've got races coming up. So check out those announcements as they come out through the Discord 45 minutes before the race starts. Anyway, with that, I'm going to give Speed Gaming back the channel for approximately 15 minutes so that Softnum and Goat's Pirate can come in here, get ready for Solario Rex versus Jay Shidel. And that is our 10 p.m. Eastern race. So stick around if you're interested. Maybe get a little snack, do a little stretching. We'll see you later. Have a good I'm night. It's randomizer.com. <laughs> Free real estate. <laughs> Look at all those chickens. Wow.